your doomsday here and today we are finally back with another video and in this video we're going to be playing some adagio top lane so i played this match a while ago i needed to take a small break i think i took a nice two week break but i'm finally back but i still recorded a couple games and i'm just going to do some voiceovers over them so in this match we're playing some adagio top lane this is from like two or three weeks ago i don't even really remember the match much but i do remember a little bit so we'll see how this goes now at level one uh, an adagio can now trade any bot laner really so i wasn't really scared to take that trade because i know with your empowered autos you can easily out trade now our team comp we have an anka mid Koshka jungle and a Kane bot lane, which is all right. So to start off with, I actually got a book and a Swift shooter, and I don't. You don't necessarily need the book eulogy since you already have self healing with your A ability, but I got it just cause it's not really needed or anything. But over here, I'm trying to get an auto onto him because I want to cancel his healing since as soon as you take damage, it cancels the healing from the barrier trance and stuff. So that's what I was trying to do, but he went out of range. Now I'm just trying to form up. I remember this match was from like when I was first like trying out Adagio and I had no idea how to play him at all, so... <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure on the ranges and stuff, like I wasn't anywhere close. I wasn't close enough to Gwen to do that. But I'm just farming up, and looking back on this, I definitely should have placed a cam inside of the bush. Because I've no- well, actually, I do see that the jungler's in mid, so that's probably why I didn't really bother yet. So I poke him out a bit. And... I'm actually not too worried, because... Their jungler is Miho, and Miho is in mid. So that was the reason why. Never here, I am backing up because I do see that Miho was missing, so I just wanted to be safe in case they were rotating bot. Backed up a bit. And now I could just wave clear this again. Honestly, in my opinion, like I think Gwen is super weak in this meta. Like Gwen just doesn't have enough damage or sustain or anything. Sure the B ability is nice, but she gets out damaged by a lot of heroes in my opinion. And I don't think it's that good of a hero. I'd say the best bot laners are probably things like mm, Kinetic's good, Vox is solid, Kestrel's solid, and then Melee's like, I think Kense is good. And then you can make like Rona work, I guess. So over here, I want to try and force a flask, that's my main goal. I accidentally take a turret shot there. And I see Gwen's recalling. I can't stop the recall, so I just try and push this in as fast as I can. And yeah, looking back on this, I definitely did not need the Book of Eulogies. I probably could have just gotten a crystal bit. And used that, because that definitely would have helped much more. With damage-wise. Possibly no. Alright, yes. So now I know that my healer's back up. They got first blood on our support in mid, but looking at the gold, we did a much better job of CSing, so we actually do have a gold lead, even though they got first blood. And <laughs> Miho just shows up and I just go up on that because I can't really last hit over at Miho. <laughs> yeah, he has vision on me, I think. Yeah, he knew I was there, that's why I just... Left it since I can't last it over a storm or over a storm crown banner since I know that he did have a banner since he's a jungler It would be super hard to last it over him Now I'm just trying to stay out of range of the Miho B abilities And I do a really bad job of that because that range is actually pretty long Now I'm worried that Miho's gonna a in and try and poke me but now that the marks ran out I can just go back to clearing these and over here, Miho does go for that. 
She's trying to sell a recall. I mean, if I would have... I was like half trying to recall, half not. Since, really their two options are one, stop my recall, and if they do that, they're going to take a lot of damage like that. Or two, just let me recall and I'll be perfectly fine with that. So over here, I don't know what was going on. I guess I was desyncing a bunch. But I'm using my ability to heal myself mostly. Because the heal on it is actually pretty useful in lane. So I'm still worried that Miho's inside of that bush. That's why I placed the cam there. I cleared that out. I know I can easily 1v1 this one without Miho around. So yeah, I poke him out a bit. I don't have flask. He most likely does have flask, so... I am just recalling. Oh no, I did not recall. I stayed. I think I was going to recall, but then Gwen started to back off, so I didn't recall. And now Gwen is back. So yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to get as much CS as I can, really. That's the main goal at the beginning. Because once I get my first item, I know I can easily outtrade this Miho, or this, why did I say Miho, um, the Gwen. Like, now I should have a decent amount of damage, and I could just start chunking him with my autos. Because I'm actually ahead of him in gold. Just, probably just because I've been CSing better. But Gwen actually gets the turret there, which is unfortunate. But that's fine, because we already got their bot turret a long time ago. So I just grab this. I'm not gonna boots onto this guy or anything because I know that first of all, if I boots onto him and use my A ability, Gwen will just <clears throat> Gwen will just use her B ability and then just um escape from the slow. So that's kind of pointless since I wouldn't have been able to kill him. Like at least I've forced the boots, so now now I know that Gwen has no boots for the next like minute and a half unless Gwen buys new boots. And I'm pretty sure I checked what tier boots Gwen have. I think Gwen had tier 1 boots, just. So I know that if she buys tier 2, then she will have boots. But if not, then she has no boots. Oh. Now I'm starting to be able to poke. Trying to use my A on the minions to get the burn onto Gwen. And I am trying to catch him off guard from that bush, but I wasn't able to. That's fine though, because I still just want to push this under. Yeah, put the cam there, because Miho was missing. Miho recalled like 10 seconds ago or something like that. So I needed to make sure that she wasn't going to come and gank me. So Gwen probably recalled here. This is best. And now I have enough for my alternating current, finally. So now the next item, Shatter Glass, of course. And that's when most of the damage comes in, once you get your Shatter Glass. That's when you're probably strongest. So I'm waiting to see if Gwen- I know that the healer's coming up, so I know that Gwen's probably gonna come in this direction to come and grab it soon. So that's why I'm chilling in this bush. I know I have a cam in here, so Gwen doesn't even know I'm here. Ah, <laughs> I screwed that up, because Gwen went to shop, actually, instead of to the healer. And now our entire team rotates there, and... Trying to escape, but Miho got a stun onto me. And I am dead. Yeah. That was... A huge throw. That was such a good look, but that was unfortunate that Gwen went to the shop before to before Gwen went to get the healer. So yeah, I just sell my book here. There's really no point in having that anymore. Oh, that was not bad. I threw so badly there. I shouldn't have kept on chasing too. I should have just ordered once or twice and then backed off. Over here, we're feeding them even more. We gave the Gwen a kill, and I can't really chase onto him. Because 
if I don't have boots or anything up. Sometimes you have to do it yourself. Sure, no time like yeah, Miho's still here, <laughs> almost dead again. And I am dead again, actually. Yeah, this Miho was super fed early. Koshka can't really win that without ult. Yeah, and they use portal to save him, to be safe. So, that was a couple of throws right there. I really underestimated the damage of Miho. I definitely did not expect it to be that much, but I guess since Miho's the most fed in the match, makes sense that it does the most damage. But as the match goes on, the damage from Miho will definitely fall off. Especially once I start to get some defense and stuff. Drifting on the halcyon. So I'm just pushing up. I'm waiting to see if Gwen comes into this bush, of course. And she did. And I just boots after him. <laughs> and I can like kill him in like four autos. That was kind of risky on my part since I didn't have vision of anybody, but the thing is is that like I'm worth no gold at all if they do kill me, and I'm being safe because I have no idea where Miho is, but I just say screw it, I'm just gonna go for it, <laughs> and Miho does appear, but <laughs> I have ults, I just use ults to get me some fortified health there, and I die. I should have just... I don't know, actually. That, that wasn't necessarily a bad trade, because I did get 300 gold from that turret, which was pretty helpful, I guess. And I wasn't worth any gold, really, so... That was an alright trade, I'd say. That wasn't necessarily the worst thing that it could be. So finally, I have my Shatter Gloss, and now this is my big power spike. Like, I could just abuse this one now. Their only weapon power damage is Gwen. The other two main damage dealers are CP, so... That's probably the thing that, that I'm going to have to build defense more for the most. I know somebody's in here. Yeah, he <laughs> just dips out of there. I can actually trade with him pretty well now. I have so much damage. Like, if I get the jump on anybody, I should be able to kill most people. But yeah, they're all here. And that was a really good root from Lance. He definitely saved me there. If he didn't land that root, I probably would have died. And I didn't even get an assist for that kill onto Miho. But now we're all because getting super fed. And I'm just going to push this in because I can't even catch up to him. <laughs> I just steal the kill. Yep, now I'm just pushing this in more. Trying to get the next turret if I can before they come back up. Even though Miho will probably come this way. So I think I just push this in and then back off probably. It's probably the smartest move. Yep. Probably go and grab the healer if that's up. No, I'm just gonna. Oh, I was looking to bush camp this Gwen. I was gonna sit in that bush and wait for Gwen to walk in that direction, but Gwen came earlier than expected. So I'm, I'm trying to pull off this bush now since I knew that Gwen was gonna check for the healer. And Gwen was able to ult, but that doesn't do anything. I could still three shot him. <laughs> The, the damage is so crazy that CP Adachio does. And the thing is that I didn't even get ahead, like, I died two times early due to careless stuff. But I'm still able to destroy this and go in 1v1. So now I'm just pushing for the next turret. I see they're all up here. We could fight this if me and Anka are here. Because now I have a decent amount of gold with those kills. And I can grab this. Miho's here. 
She can't kill me in one burst now. Like, I could trade back with them. Yeah, my entire team's here, though, so I'm good. And I could always just heal myself with my A like that. Because the way that Adagio works is... <laughs> and this Gwen is so dead. Yikes. So the way that the heal for Adagio works... <clears throat> it's... Uh, the ratios are... So if you have more CP power, then... It's gonna... Heal over time. So like, notice that my health bar is like gonna increase over time whenever I use my A on myself. But if you're building health items, like Oakheart, stuff like that, it's gonna be like an instant heal, so like a burst of heal at once, instead of over time. So now we're just trying to dip out of here. I know Grumtra's looking for an eat on to me, so I am gonna be careful. Now if he eats me, I'm not too worried since I could just heal myself and ult. That's probably what I try and do, but we're able to catch out that Lyra a bit. And now the Grump is just super far overextended. Not even that worried. So that was a nice amount of gold. That was like 500 something gold. And I just buffed the cane because I'm way too far behind to catch up to him. So Kane is able to get that kill. And now, I'm trying to get this turret here. My team probably should have stayed to help me get this, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm trying to get a cam place down, so we can so I can go for the armory if I want. Since a lot of times, like, and. A lot of times, if you know you can't like win team fights and stuff like that, you can always win through split pushing and stuff like that. It's a lot of people they think that the only way you win is through fighting the enemy, but if you use enough macro and things like that, you can easily just, just split push the side lane and stuff like that. So I just buy TP boots this game. I'm kind of just like I'm just I don't even know what I'm really doing. I just. I don't want to try it out, I guess. And I go back to this bush again since I know the healer's respawning, and I actually threw shot that guy. So, I just grabbed that. And if I had a cam there, I could have just gone and got the armory. Because you don't need minions to take the armory. Like, you need minions to do the turrets, but not the armories. If you have a hero that does enough damage, then you could just go in there by yourself without any minions. No, I'm just gonna keep on pushing this in and I <laughs> one shot these minions too. <laughs> and my team's getting kills. I'm pretty sure Gwen's heading that direction to fight him, so I do keep on pushing, but Gwen was not. And our Anka is fine. <laughs> and there are two turrets right there. I don't know why the pathing took me that way. So now I finally do get my cam down. I'm sitting in this bush. I know Gwen's about to come here. And Gwen walks right next to me. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, I'm so used to having normal boots that I press boots to chase after Gwen. And then I brought up the teleport. And over here, I know I get a brilliant idea in a second that is not so brilliant, actually. Well, it was a good idea, but I did not think it through exactly. Or was it right now? I don't remember. We'll see in a sec. No, it wasn't right now. I think it was in this match. We'll, we'll see. See, I'm, I'm, I'm debating going to this healer or not. Because I know Gwen's coming back in this direction. But I see Miho's here. I'm going to be careful this time. See if anybody comes this way. Now I head back here because... I'm trying to go for this armory. Because I, I want them to fight so they don't recall when I get the armory. Because if I just go right now, they'll stop him from recalling. 
So I'm trying to tell them to start up ghosts, so then they'll start fighting and stuff, and then I can go for armory. And if they do recall, then we could just go to ghost. I could just teleport to ghost. And then we could, like, 5v4 them. That's what I'm trying, so they are starting up ghost. I'm waiting for them to notice that, so then they all go there. But they aren't even chasing them. I don't know what they're doing. But about now, I see they're about to start fighting. So I just go in right now. Start chunking down this armory. And I was able to get it. And now I'm just backing out. So, I probably did not have to do that, but I just wanted to save this turret. Now, another thing I could have done if I just wanted to get out was I could have used my block to avoid being slowed by the crystal vein thing, the turret shooting thing. What do you call that? Dang, I don't know what it's called. The thing that the base shoots. Since that thing actually has a really good slow on it, so... But I could have just blocked that off and then tried and got away. So honestly, even though we lost two people, I think it was a good trade since we did get an armory. Now, like, if we win one team fight, we could just end right away. And so I realize Gwen is dead, there's nobody to bush camp anymore. And I head back here to place a cam. In case I want to try and backdoor again. But... I see Miho's coming this way. And I just four shot Miho. And I know I'm dead here. There isn't much I could do. I should have gone the other way, I should have been more aware of that. Of that. I forced out a Creasy at least. Oh wait, I actually lived this. Oh, never mind. The slant saved me. What a legend. I thought I was so dead. Oh, I hope he didn't die for me. Dang, he did die for me. Oh, I feel bad for him now. That was my fault, but <laughs> he died for that. Yikes. Okay. I got myself a block, and now... At this point, I know I'm just going to try and backdoor for the win, so... I'm just going for two shatter glasses to get straight up damage. I'm trying to see if I can catch somebody off the backside, but I can't do much. We're able to get the grump. And the rest of the team, I think they recall on the backside or something like that. But Koshka gets the CPU buff over me. And now I'm waiting to see if Miho comes in here. I heal way too early. I made it super obvious I was in there. I should have waited a bit. And now is when Koshka AFKs. So, that was a rip. That was a shutdown too, so they got a lot of gold from that. And our Anka is looking like he's... Nah, he's good. <laughs> I think... Yeah, we're good. Well, he traded one for one. That's not a good trade though, because we got their support. Yeah, that, that cam. I've learned that it's just better to place the cam outside the base. I mean, I'm not exactly sure how the vision inside the base works, since I know that like, sometimes if you place a cam inside the base, they can see it and sometimes they can't. So I need to look into that. But, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what I should have done there, like. And I screwed up there. But I should have either hard committed or just tried to run away. Instead, I kind of, like, altered between the two. If I would have just committed into that Malin and tried to kill him, I definitely could have. And if I would have just tried to run away, I might have been able to. I could have just used my TP boots to get away or something like that. But instead, I kind of went in the middle. But over here, I realized Arkoshka's AFK. Winning a 4v5 is unlikely. Possible, but unlikely. So I'm like, I could just try and backdoor, since... That's super easy to backdoor. Not enough people do it, honestly. Like, if they just stop him at Ghost... 
I'm saying I could just oh this was when I get the brilliant idea I see this Gwen up here and I'm like oh my gosh I can kill this guy but Gwen backs off super fast I guess the teleport animation takes a while so that was a big mistake on my part so now I'm thinking it's just Gwen here <laughs> I saw that the Lyra and stuff was rotating so I started to back off but I didn't realize how close Moline was so I realized that was the throw in my part. Now they can probably get ghost. The enemy team can't really chase, like our comp is really hard to chase. That's a good route. But jeez, that Miho just gets blown up by the cane. Like, now I realize I don't have my cam anymore. So I think I was trying to ask Lance to place a cam. Since Lance can get in and out super quick. Like, he has his roll and stuff. He can block CC with his B ability and things. So that's why I go to him. But I can always do it myself, worst comes to worst. Now our Miho gets caught, or our Anka gets caught. And I realize our jungle is AFK, so I might as well take it. No, I'm not gonna take the CP buff, I'll let Anka have that. Now I'm trying to either catch somebody, yeah, I know they're on Ghost, so. I actually just head here. <laughs> and <laughs> Miho's over here. I don't really realize that, but. Yep. That kind of scared me off a bit. I didn't even get my cam down. <laughs> I placed two cams actually. I would wish I could have gotten it closer to the armory, but. And their jungle's alright. That's not the worst place. So they're all here now. I gotta be careful not to get stunned or rooted. I'm able to block off the root. Have my flask and stuff, so. I'm able to get out. If I didn't block that route right away, I would have been screwed. Definitely. <laughs> and that lance pushes him out of the cane A. So now, I can't really teleport when everybody's missing. No. They do get a 28 minute black claw, so at this point I'm like, oh crap, I just gotta go. Because there's no way we're defending this. 3v5 now since we have an afk <laughs> i just say screw it my cam is way too far away they're already on to our armory but our kashka comes back last second and i'm just hoping that they can stall them long enough so i can um get this grumshaw is here and i am dead If they didn't let Grumshaw recall, I probably could have gotten it, but it's fine. We're able to make like, like two of them, two more of them recalled. Gwen recalled and I didn't see who all recalled. I know Gwen and Grump recalled for me. I don't know about Miho. So I made two of them recall, which is fine. So now they weren't even able to end. Because if, if I didn't go there, then they all could have just pushed with it and probably gotten like all our turrets and armories. Hmm. So I'm kind of like, I'm trying to plan out my back door here. But there isn't exactly the best look yet. Gotta make sure Kane doesn't die, but sadly he does. Kane and Alka together have so much burst, like if Kane lands an A ability and then Alka lands an A, that person is just dead. There's literally nothing they could do. So now I'm just hanging out near the CP. I start heading back since 
I know that they're gonna um be on this ghost wing since they have they killed one of us. Of course they're gonna try and take an objective. So I'm like go and fight him there and I'll make a go for this. So I see all five of them are there, so I go and head this way. They get ghost wing. I know our Anka and like Koshka and stuff, they have a spell fire which will keep them from recalling. And now they just keep on fighting and I am just autoing the vein crystal. And now they're trying to recall, but it's way too late. So you can pretty much win a game without even team fighting. Like, I team fought like once maybe when I killed the Grumchaw. And that's really about it. So like, even if you're facing players that are like, better in general, you can still easily beat them. If you just play it right. Now, I think we have one more match that I'll do. And thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. And let's go ahead and get on to the next match. Okay, we are back, and in this match, we were playing some Lance top lane. I played against, like, it was really weird because this match was early in the morning. I played against the same people, like, four times in a row. And I played a lot of Lance this morning, I remember. And I believe I was laning against an Idris, I'm pretty sure. So, again, on Lance, I just like to start off with Banner to clear my healer and stuff. And then when I first get my recall in, I'll get my book of eulogies. Since you really kind of need a book of eulogies to sustain in lane. Because without that, it's pretty hard to trade evenly. Because you don't have any regen or any sort of sustain or anything. So that's pretty much why you need a book in most cases. And our bot laner just got cheesed so badly. If you're ever playing against a Reza, you always have to be careful of that. And like, I don't know why he tried to trade back. That was a really big mistake. Since if you ever get caught off guard by Reza, like, just back off and recall. You really, like, do not have to trade back. That's a huge mistake that he made. So now with Reza getting early killed, it's, of course, really bad for him. But it is pretty nice, though, that it's a Reza top lane. Since facing a Reza jungle is so scary, since it can gank so easily with both of his dashes. So whenever I do play against Reza, I do have to be really careful. But since I know it's a, it's gonna be in our bot lane most of the match, I'm not really too scared. See, so yeah, up with an Idris, I know that I can easily out-trade him, because it's an Idris early game. And he can't even trade auto attacks with me. Right now I'm just trying to shove this underneath his turret and try and make him miss some farm if I can. And it's really my main goal. And I see that their jungler is in mid, so... I'm not worried at all about a gank. Um, <laughs> that was such a bad impale. I was way too far back. Yep. I'm pretty much just recall here since... I like to recall at least when I have 600 gold. That's a good recall for me since... I can get my book and my boots. And then I could just work towards my storm crown from there. So that's the ideal recall for me. At least once I get that much gold. So yeah, he's looking for my healer, but my healer's not even up yet. And I know that I can last hit over him since I do have a banner. Now the black feathers here, I'm just trying to wave clear and sort of poke him away. Since I don't want to let him have too much damage on my turret. And I can always push these minions out of turret range like that. <laughs> like the Black Feather had to waste boots and now he's almost dead. Since a lot of people, they don't expect that. Like you just push the minions out of the turret range and then the turret focus just changes to the hero. That's really, really toxic. So like since I have this book, I can easily just sustain. And I'm doing fine. Like I'll regen all of my health off with this wave. Just because I got that book. And then I can go and grab my healer even if I need to. So a really important thing to keep in mind with the heroes that you're playing in top lane is like, pretty much what your hero is good at. So like, Lance isn't necessarily a dominate lane like you destroy your opponent. Like, if I was looking for a type of hero like that, I'd probably be playing Grumchaw, since with Grumchaw you could just, like, completely shut down people and, like, pretty much farm kills with them. 
But like Lance is more of a team fight hero. And you play around your team and try and rotate for him. Over here, I tried to impel over the wall. I'm not sure if you could even do that really, but I shouldn't have tried that. <laughs> that was And then I screwed that up. And then I got scared that Black Feather trying to execute me. So I had to waste my stuff. That was a huge mistake. <laughs> I just wanted to try it out. That definitely was not the move. Yeah, that costed me some turret damage there. I probably shouldn't have recalled. Like, I didn't look at the wave. If I would have seen how far the wave was pushed up, I probably wouldn't have recalled. Because they got so much turret damage off of that. And I definitely don't want to get free turret damage. So over here, I know that looks like I'm probably about to lose the turret, so I'm trying to, like, force a flask at least to try and get a kill. But... I wasn't able- I was able to force a flash, but I wasn't able to get a kill, and <laughs> that info went straight over him. I think that when I did this match, was this the first match? Since I went against, like, <laughs> this Idris, like, three times in a row. Yeah, I don't know why there's three of them bought, but <laughs> this dude's overextending for me so far, and I see our mid laners rotating up, so that's fine. Yeah, this Shrinwalker is just dead. He overextended so far for me. <laughs> yeah, I think the, it was the match after this that like I played super well. This match was like a decent match but like the next match I like popped off. It was probably the best game I had all, like for the entire week but for some reason my recording didn't save and I was pretty sad about that. But since I'm utility top, I don't mind giving my farm to our hyper carries. Since the main goal of a team comp like this, like we have three supports, two damage. You just want all the gold to go towards your carries. And I do trust my carries in this match, since I know who they are. I know that they're actually decent and they can carry if they do get the gold. So I'm not really afraid to give them my gold and stuff and my farm if they do rotate up. Over here again, I'm just trying to push this into turret range. It's really tilting me how the turret's not attacking it. Since I want him to miss an extra minion or two, so now it does go underneath turret, which is what I wanted. <laughs> I'm really just trying to force a flask and push this underneath turret. And I'm not too scared about Black Feather either, since they can't kill me. With my ult, I can easily just escape stuff. Plus I have boots. So yeah, I'm able to force a flask there, which is good. And I have enough for my storm crown. I could have gone and shot for my storm crown here, but I wanted to keep up the pressure. Mm, looks like he's recalling. And yeah, Black Feather does come, so I do just back out. I know he can't kill me or anything. I can go and get my storm crown now. Dude, utility Black Feather is actually super strong right now. I faced against- I went against it a few times, and its damage is- its base damage is so high. That's what makes Utility Black Feather good. It's because the base damages on his abilities and auto attacks are just so high that even with the tank build, you still do so much damage. Also, I believe his A is in Execute, so it's based off a percentage of health missing, not like amount of damage that you have. But yeah, <laughs> I remember this match wasn't the best match. I missed so many impulses this match, it was kind of sad. But the next match I landed everything. I don't even remember what I was in the next match. I think the next match I was like, I was like 4-0 and like 30 or something crazy like that. I was pretty tilted that the recording didn't save. But I still wanted to upload a Lance game, just because I do have a lot of fun lane, playing Lance. Even though I'm not necessarily the best at it, <laughs> I just have fun. See, so yeah, I can still like out trade this guy. I'm really just playing around my Storm Crown proc. He wasted boots there. So now I'm not gonna really go for a trade until I get my Storm Crown back up in two seconds. So now that I have it up, I'm trying to go on to him when I do have it up, but he does back off. Since the Storm Crown's doing the majority of the damage really with the proc, so I'm waiting. Now I have it back up. So that's why I went in right there, to get that Storm Crown damage. 
And see, I tried I tried it again, and I did force a flask, and I pretty much took out all that health that the flask did, that the flask healed. So over here, I just got scared of Blackfeather, so I kind of just backed off, because I didn't want Blackfeather to gank me. That's honestly, like, the biggest mistake that I see top laners make. They really are never aware of the jungler. Like, when I play jungle, it's crazy the amount of top laners that die early just because they don't keep track of the jungler. Yeah, I'm just recalling. I'm pretty sure they're rotating mid here. It's pretty hard to gank a Samuel in mid. That's, like, the most annoying hero to try and gank. Since it's just so hard to catch him, plus with the Lyra too that can stop engages, it's just super toxic. Now that was a good Arden Gauntlet. He was able to get the um, Churnwalker. If he would have gotten the Idris, that probably would have been better too, but Churnwalker is good enough. And a really cool thing that you can do with the Lance is you can use your B ability to push him into the Gauntlet, so even if the Gauntlet doesn't hit him, you could just use your B and push him into it. I'm trying to see if he'll get this lower, because one Stormcrown proc won't get it yet, so I need to get it lower, but he's trying to focus me instead, but <laughs> I'm still able to get it. Yeah, he knew that I was going to last hit it with the Stormcrown, so he tried to bully me out, but I was willing to make that trade for Boots, and I come back for the healer. I accidentally auto him though. That's one of the annoying things, though, because... The way that the tap controls work is that it prioritizes heroes over like minions and treants, of course. So that kind of screwed me over there. No, I just form this up and get my pulse wave because wave clearing with pulse wave is so satisfying and so much easier too and faster. It's way more efficient. So now I can clear this like five times faster with the pulse wave. That's why I went to go and get that. So now I'm just going to get my treads. I <laughs> see Idris is on that. Which, I don't know why he's on it, since I can last hit it over him. I can even now trade him here. So over there, pretty much what I like to do is get my or er, get my um, Pulse Wave proc on him. Since the Pulse Wave proc, when it like does the burst thing, it actually does a lot of damage. And also slows a good amount too. Yeah, that was pretty sad, but... I'm still able to force a flask, but I do have to flask myself. I went for the impale, even though it wasn't exactly the best look. I mean, might as well go for it in that case. Try and pick up the kill. So now, I just back up. I really don't want to take any risks right now, since I don't want to let the Idris get fed off of me. Since if I die to this Idris, I don't give him a decent amount of gold, so I'm just like, I'll back off. Let him have a little bit of farm. But make sure I don't give up my bounty. So yeah, I noticed that they're all CP and definitely go in Shroud. Because normally I'd probably go like, I'm either going to go Crucible or Atlas at this point. Those are the main two items I like to build. But there's no need for an Atlas and there isn't really much to Crucible on their team so... I thought I'd just get a shroud and be tanky in frontline. Since if I could like body block Reza A abilities, things like that, that'd be helpful for our team. Now I see on this, he's on this. <laughs> I didn't realize he was one shot. I know he already used his A, he just wasted his ult there. <laughs> All I have to do is auto him once. But, like the reason why I know I could play super aggressive in the jungle is because I can always just jump over the ghost wing pit. And we had our entire team rotating too, which was of course good. So that was <laughs> a pleasant surprise, I guess. Yeah, I think I actually stunned him out of his ult there, I'm not sure. It looks like he was going through the ult animation rezo, but I'd probably have to watch that over to see. That was really good, get the Enwola. I started to play better after the lane phase. The lane phase wasn't exactly the best. I definitely could have done more. But once the team fight started to happen, I did pretty good. So here, I just want this big minion. And I want to push this underneath the turret. 
but I'm super low and I don't really want to risk it again because now I have a thousand bounty pretty much so I definitely do not want to die now yep now that I have my shot I mean I might as well go for crucible there isn't much more to build I guess crucible rooks decree are my two main options and I'd much rather get this crucy Sometimes I'll actually grab an early block on to lands, like if I'm playing something like a Koshka or a Gwen or something like that, I'll just get a block just to be safe in lane, help me escape a bit and things like that. See, I can still out trade this Idris. Like, I'm just making my pulse wave proc on him, see how slow he is, and then that makes it so much easier to land a root, but he was able to dodge that with his A. But against another hero like Kinetic or something like that, it would have made it so easy. And especially if we do it on your team fight, like if you get your pulse wave onto five enemies, that's just like insane. So like this is how I like to get in and out of the enemy jungle. Since that way he doesn't even know I'm here. Since he didn't see me. So I'm just grabbing this. He is walking this way, I'm pretty sure, because I didn't see him on the minimap. And I am able to still outtrade him. He can't do much to me since now that I do have the shroud, I can easily outtrade him. I'm just bullying him out at this point. He's able to flash, and <laughs> he just ults there. So I just accept that and I just back out and let him live I guess. He had to waste his ult for it, <laughs> I don't know what our Orden did there. <laughs> he tried to dive the or something. So yeah, I'm just trying to last at this at this point. Make sure they don't get any extra gold. But I do leave the weapon power since again I don't want to overextend. <laughs> but yeah, my CS this game has been pretty good though. It's really nice to see us with Lance since you have the um your auto attacks hit all the minions at once, and I, <laughs> I'm desyncing so much over there. I'm pretty sure that Impel was right on top of him, but I like rubber banded back. That was weird. Yep, this churn's screwed pretty much. This is not exactly the best comp for churn. Like, churn is a weird hero. It's such a hard hero to like pick. So in some cases it's good, other cases it's bad, and sometimes it's just super hard hero to play. Like, into this comp, first of all, landing your like, chain onto Samuel is... I don't know what that Black Feather just did, but... Sure. Like, landing a chain onto Samuel is just super hard alone. Plus, you have Lyra, which is also a hard hero to chain. And then Miho, of course, can break chains with all of her blinks whenever she uses her A abilities. So... Um, that's, again, a hard hero to chain. But then me and er, me and Arden are pretty easy here to chain. But as long as I play it right and I like use my ults to get out of the chains, it's actually pretty easy to avoid chains with Lance. Now this Reza is super overextended. I'm pretty sure he's gonna try and escape through the jungle somehow. So I do head that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he went to that bush. But we were too late to that. <laughs> that was pretty sad. I mean, that's the only place he could have been, really, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, this lane, this turn walk actually already has a few chains. So, over here, I'm getting my pulse wave proc onto everybody, slowing them all down. Getting the roots and stuff going. And now I'm being really cautious since turn walker has like all of his chains. I push him into the gauntlet, then I was able to block off the ult, luckily. And now he's just gonna CC to death, he cannot move. Yeah, a lot of people, like, just back up and recall. There's really no point in recalling up front. Like, you, you're just gonna get your recall stopped, and it's just a waste of time. And it hurts you a lot. In lane. <laughs> so over here, Miho's kind of popping off now. But I'm pretty sure he goes in way too deep. Mm, 
me up. We were able to get that kill. And I had to pop flask because that was a good Vox ult. All of us were lined up perfectly for him. We definitely should have spread out. That was a lot of bounties to him. Let's see, I just wanted this 300 gold from getting this turret. That's the main reason. Now I pretty much have like all the items that I want. Now for my last item, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna get. I don't remember what I got. Either Atlas or um Atlas or Rook's Decree probably. Yep, I'm just chilling in top because if they are on Black Claw, I can't really contest them by myself and I might as well go ahead and get this top turret and force them to recall. But they weren't on black, so. Yep. I was still able to get the turret anyways. And as you can see, the Black Feather Pulse Wave slowed me a bunch. Like, that's just how broken Pulse Wave is. Like, imagine if you get that on an entire team. I'm gonna have a video sometime soon with one of my new favorite picks. And that you, and I like pretty much abused Pulse Wave on it. You'll see it when I upload a video of it. So over here, I definitely do not want this Reza Steel in that. He wastes one of his dashes in, he wastes his ult, so he has one more dash. He uses that there, so he has nothing left. I still have my ult, but I don't want to waste it. That was a good block from Vox. <laughs> I didn't even realize our team was getting Black Claw. So over here, I know that they're trying to get back to defend the Black Claw, so... I'm kind of just chilling around, trying to keep him from recalling. Stall him while Miho's pushing ball in. So, I don't know why this Idris was chasing me since he should not have been able to kill me. Like, I just trolled here. <laughs> I meant to use my B ability. So what I was going to do is I was going to use my B ability to push him into the wall and then A over the wall. But I accidentally used my A ability first. I think I mentioned earlier, this is early in the morning, I was not in the right mindset and I butchered that so badly. I fat fingered, <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> Look at how much damage Miho does. Like, Miho is still such a broken hero. And at least we got armory off of that. We were able to stall him long enough. So, the only sad part is I was able to give him a decent amount of gold from that, which I didn't want to do. But we could still win fights. Like, our team comp is super strong. If Miho just lands one good ult, we can easily win any fight. And we could always backdoor too. If needed. Oh, I actually went for Husk for my last item. Yeah, I guess I wasn't exactly sure what to build. Looking back on it, don't... I'm not sure. I don't think it really would have mattered too much what I went for last item. Atlas could have helped, make it, helped against Idris and Vox. And then Rooks could have just helped to peel, but... I think I was just looking to get more tanky this match, I guess. I probably should have gone Rooks, actually, for my last item. That would have been the best for the team, probably. So over here, I'm just waiting for Miho to get back. Once Miho comes, we could definitely team fight. Now this <laughs> Idris is overextended. Pretty sure he's recalling somewhere. He's still here, actually. Yeah, remember, I, I thought he was recalling. And... <laughs> this was pretty bad. He he tried to engage onto the same wall instead of escaping. He might have been able to escape actually. I highly doubt it, but there is a small chance. If he would have dodged my impel, he probably could have escaped. Since he still had his ult and stuff. So yeah, they actually have a fair amount of gold now, so... It definitely does make it harder. But we're still good. So now, at this point, I'm kind of realizing that we're slowly feeding and stuff, so... Worst case scenario, I go over here, place a cam, but for some reason, they have a cam there. I don't know why. So I place another cam. Maybe they don't see one of them. Since I knew that... <laughs> and I also saw that Reza and... 
Yeah, two of them recalled for that, so... That was also... I mean, it was like half intentional, half unintentional. I didn't expect two of them to recall. And now they're so split right now, like... <laughs> three utility heroes. I don't know why they're still fighting. Three utility heroes versus a CP Vox. We're just supposed to get that kill and back out. I don't know why they kept on trying to auto-attack a CP Vox with an Eve. They're literally gonna heal all the damage. Yeah, somehow... <laughs> we're able to keep them here for long enough. And now I know that our team's coming back. And this dude's trying to get me so badly. Said Miho's... Oh wait, no, not Miho, that's Samuel. And <laughs> Samuel's able to kill him. So now that we got a kill, we can take an objective. And again, a fat finger and use my B ability instead of my ult. But... It's super annoying because half the people want to do Ghost and the other half want to do Black Claw. And yeah, I got a phone call in the middle, so stop the recording for a minute. But we are back now. And I'm not exactly sure what this Churnwalker is doing exactly. I thought he was going to try and escape, so I predicted my might impel the wrong way. Since I don't understand how a support Churnwalker is going to steal a Black Claw. Is he going to do it with his chain or what? <laughs> so that was kind of unexpected, but... We're able to get that, and if you did not know, after 25 minutes, the Black Claw is actually enraged. So that means that it does more damage, and it's also tankier. So look on the Black Claw. Let's see, when is it going to show up on the screen? Notice how it has flames on its back. That means that it's enraged. So now I know Idris is over there. I'm waiting for somebody to pop his shroud, since I want to use my B ability, but nobody was popping his shroud. Which is really tilting me, but... Eventually... It was popped, and that was a really good Samuel ult. <laughs> I thought Reza was gonna die, but use his dash the other way. I just had to predict it. Yep, yeah, we're able to clean up this kill too, and that is pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Do make sure to like and subscribe, and I will definitely get back on the grind. So let's take a quick look at the builds, and. Thanks for watching. Mm, let's look at the builds. All these builds are pretty good. Except for maybe the Dragon's Zone Reza, that's kind of questionable. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.